topic we'll study vectors of our gene cloning and specifically we'll be studying about bacteriophages today so as we discussed about the first dna uh, vector for gene cloning as plasmids this presentation or this video will be about bacteriophages so let me first introduce you to the bacteriophages what are exactly bacteriophages actually these phages or bacteriophages are the viruses that exclusively infect bacteria so as we have the category of viruses which infect us as human beings or other organisms these bacteriophages are the viruses which will infect bacteria uh, what uh, what is the composition of bacteriophages they have a simpler structure with one dna or rna molecule as a genetic material and uh, and which is surrounded by a protective coat which is known as capsid what is the capsid made up of it is made up of protein particles right and the dna rna molecule all uh, as always will carry genes responsible for the synthesis of protein capsid or for the replication of the DNA molecule. There can be two types of phage structures. Head and tail. Example of that is lambda bacteriophage or filamentous. Whose example can be M13 bacteriophage. So let us first discuss the generalized phage infection cycle or lytic cycle how does the phage infect a bacteria and how does it multiply and produce its copies so let me first uh, uh, see look here in the first step what happens the phage particle with the help of its tail will attach to the bacteria and will transfer its dna or will inject its dna into the bacterial cell fine in the next step what happens the dna of the bacteriophage is replicated by using the phage enzymes encoded by phage genes so bacteriophage will transfer its dna and this dna molecule will be replicated inside the bacteria and the enzymes which will be used for the replication are enzymes coded by the, this DNA itself right so what happens after this simultaneously to the DNA replication the capsid proteins uh, are also synthesized by the enzymes encoded here and the capsid proteins along with the tail and the polyhedral this head structure and this DNA are assembled into the complete phage particles which are assembled and then released what is the characteristic of this lytic cycle when these phage particles are assembled and are released it is accompanied by cell lysis so the bacteria is lysed at the end of the phage infection cycle or lytic cycle right there is another uh, category of phages which follow lysogenic phages so ex what happens certain bacteriophage under certain condition will follow a lytic cycle and if they are induced to certain other conditions if they are like maybe some other temperatures or some other environmental factor it will undergo lysogenic infection cycle so <clears throat> what is a, a lysogenic cycle a lysogenic infection is characterized by retention of the phage dna molecule in the host bacterium possibly for many thousands of cell division so as we saw in lytic cycle what happened the bacteria in the bacteria the dna of the phage was inserted it replicated the capsid protein was synthesized phage new phage particles assembled and then the bacteria was lysed to release the newly generated phage particles whereas in lysogenic phages or lysogenic infection cycle what happens the bacteria will retain the dna and it will exist inside the dna inside the bacterial cell and it can happen for numerous cell cycles cell number of divisions right so new phage particles are not being assembled here 
what happens exactly how it is retained in the bacterial dna the fast dna is inserted into the bacterial genome so the dna of the uh, bacteriophage will insert itself in the genome of the bacteria or the host bacterium the integrated form of the phage dna is known as prophage so the bacterial genome plus the phage dna is known as prophage and is quiescent and a bacterium bacterium containing this prophage is known as lysogen this bacteria you cannot you know in a uh, culture if a bacteria is undergoing a lysogenic uh, cycle and is containing a prophage it will not be distinguishable from any uninfected cell because the dna is combined with the bacterial genome so this prophage what happens eventually may be many number of cell cycles certain conditions may be induced what will ha what can happen after that the prophage is again broken down into phage dna and the bacterial genome and ultimately the phage is uh again uh, you know carry out the lytic mode it will uh, carry forward with the lytic cycle of infection that is the dna replication protein uh, synthesis capsid uh, synthesis and assembly of the new particles fast particles are ultimately released so that is the lysogenic phages how a lysogenic cycle takes place uh, let us see the example of lambda bacteriophage uh similarly along with the like just like the earlier uh, lytic cycle the dna is inserted or injected inside the cell bacterial uh, this is bacterial chromosome the lambda dna uh, the linear lambda dna will circulate under the bacterial cell and then it is integrated or incorporated inside the genome of the bacterial cell so this is the prophage and the prophage is formed and it stays like that for numerous cell cycles or cell divisions so and the prophage is passed on to the progeny or the daughter bacterial cells what happens next maybe due to some induction let's say a uh, temperature change the prophage is broken down into bacterial genome and the phage dna and here now onwards the lytic cycle resumes leading to the cell lysis so this is the lysogenic cycle the dna is incorporated into the bacterial genome leading to the formation of prophage right let us see the organization in the lambda dna molecule that is the lambda prophage bacteriophage lambda is an example of uh, bacteriophage which can undergo lytic cycle of infection as well as lysogenic cycle of infection so the dna is contained in the polyhedral head structure the lambda bacteriophage has a head and a tail structure so the dna is present in the polyhedral head and the tail what is the function of the tail it allows to attach the phage to the bacterial surface and to inject the dna into the cell what is the size of uh, lambda dna molecule it is 49 kb in size what is the characteristic property of lambda dna molecule the phage dna molecule all the genes which are related into the terms of function they are clustered the genes are present in the form of cluster on the lambda dna let's see maybe the left uh, portion contains the capsid genes this portion will contain the dna regulatory genes and the reg, uh, genes responsible for dna synthesis so this way what is the uh, main uh, <coughs> function of clustering of genes that is it allows the genes to be switched on and off accordingly as a group if we want to like if there is a time to synthesize the capsid protein all of these genes will be turned on simultaneously so this happens one more characteristic feature of lambda dna or bacteriophage lambda dna it is basically a double stranded dna molecule 
and it follows the Watson and Crick uh, model structure and uh, uh, hydrogen bonding is there between these double stranded DNA molecule but the difference is at both the ends of this DNA molecule there is a sequence of single stranded structure so at both the ends of double stranded molecule there are single stranded structures present so these single stranded structures are known as cohesive ends or cos sites what is why they are called cohesive ends because they are complementary in nature and they can bind to each other or stick together to form a <clears throat> to form a circular dna molecule so as we can remember the dna present inside the bacteriophage head is linear and once it enters the bacterial cell it is circular so how it turns into a circular dna molecule because of these cos sites right so this is the circular dna molecule so there can be two uh, functions of these cos sites first is uh, just as i told you right now it forms the circular DNA molecule which is an important point if that prophage has to be formed the circularization of this DNA is very important because once it is in the circular form then only it can be inserted into bacterial genome so that is the first importance of cos site what is the next sorry yeah let us resume what is the next function of cos site once the um, phage DNA is excluded from the bacterial genome and it has under, undergoing the lytic cycle and it is being replicated, the DNA molecules are being formed. How it is formed? By the rolling circle mechanism and for, in that case a catenane of lambda DNA molecule is formed. Just have a look like 1, 2, 3. This is a catenane different uh, lambda DNA molecules are being synthesized uh, together by rolling off mechanism and they are joined at cost si cost sites so what happens there is a gene present on the lambda DNA itself called gene A which will encode for an endonuclease endonucleases will cut DNA so it uh, gene A synthesizes an uh, uh, endonuclease which recognizes these cos sites and cut them, cut this catenin at these cos sites, leading to the formation of independent lambda DNA molecule, which is tagged in the new uh, and such that new phage particles are assembled and these DNA molecules are packed in the head structure of lambda bacteriophage. So there are two different functions of cos sites. First is the circularization of the lambda DNA molecule. Second is the recognition sites for endonuclease and packing into the polyhedral head structure. Uh, the gene A also in connection with other enzymes is responsible for the packaging into the polyhedral structure and it recognizes cos sites. Right? So, if like uh, there uh, as these cos sites are uh, only thing that are that are recognized so if we are inserting a few new genes between these cos sites it will not affect the packaging so that is an important point when we are doing gene cloning we can actually insert our gene of interest between these cos sites and they will be packed uh, along with the lambda dna in a regular way let us move to the next bacteriophage that is F3, M13 bacteriophage. It is a filamentous phage uh, like we have we learned about lambda bacteriophage which, which has had a head and tail structure. M13 had a, has a filamentous structure. So M13 DNA molecule is much smaller than lambda genome. It only carries 6407 nucleotides. So it, it is a smaller uh, DNA containing bacteriophage 
its dna is circular and is not double stranded the dna or the genome of fm13 bacteriophage is a single stranded dna so it's an important point i'll tell you in detail right now let us move and it has fewer genes so all automatically if the dna is smaller it will contain fewer genes and it it can be justified by the fact that the filament or the capsule of this bacteriophage is made up of this only just three proteins whereas the capsule of the polyhedral head and tail structure of the lambda genome of the lambda bacteriophage is made up of 15 proteins so we required more genes over there whereas we have only few genes over there so let us look at the infection cycle of this uh, bacteriophage what happens the uh, m13 uh, particle will inject its single stranded genome in the e coli or the bacteria with the help of the pilus pilus is a structure that interconnects the two bacterial cells during sexual conjugation so with the help of the pilus the injection of single stranded dna is done into the host cell and followed by the synthesis of the second strand inside the bacterial cell the single stranded dna circularizes and a double stranded replicative form is formed so that is the first step what happens next the replicative forms will produce its own copies of double stranded molecule more and more copies are formed and <clears throat> the again from this the mature m13 particles are continuously formed in this case m13 there is no cell lysis that's the major difference between lambda and m13 m13 is a phage which do not cause cell lysis whereas in this case continuously more and more single stranded dna are formed and capsid is formed and new filamentous phage is assembled and released from the dividing cell so cells can actually continue to divide without like maybe slower at a slower rate but still it will divide and more and more this uh, mature particles are formed and released accordingly so when the cell divides each daughter cell receives copies of phage genome new phage particles are also continuously released and so let us move uh, at the uh, let us have a look at the properties of m13 uh, vector the genome of this m13 vector as i told you it contains only a few uh, nucleotides about 6000 so genome is uh, obviously less than 10 kb which is a factor in the <clears throat> factor for a cloning vector right and the double stranded replicative form of this m13 genome which is synthesized once the single stranded uh, molecule is injected into the uh, E. coli or the bacterial cell the replicative form it behaves as a plasmid and so it is important in experimental purposes also the genes with an M13 based vector can be obtained in the form of single stranded DNA that is uh, as the genome of uh, M13 vector is single stranded if we use this vector for gene cloning we can obtain our gene of interest in the form of single strand and that is actually of importance in uh, many uh, techniques like DNA sequencing and in vitro mutagenesis such techniques are uh, like for such techniques we need single stranded dna so that is again an uh, importance of m13 vector next is m13 vectors they can also be used in phage display what do we do in that technique we actually identify the pair of genes whose protein product interact with one another so these are a few attractions of m13 cloning vector we discussed about bacteriophages, lambda bacteriophage and M13 bacteriophage in today's video. Just let me know if you have in case any, any confusion or anything. Just let me know in comment section. Please like my video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot.